So you want to launch and grow a successful YouTube channel, but you're overwhelmed. One person tells you that the first thing you need to do is buy a camera. Someone else tells you that the first thing you need to do is work on your thumbnails. And all you want is a week by week plan, which will tell you exactly how you can start and grow your YouTube channel in four weeks or less. Well, you guessed it, you're in luck because that's exactly what I'm going to do in today's video. So grab a notebook, grab a pen, like the video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and let's get started. Before we do though, this video is brought to you by YouTube screen, more on them later. All right, guys, I'm just going to get right to it. I'm not going to hang about. We're going to start with week one. So I'm about to break down what you should be focusing on during the first week of you creating this YouTube channel. And then I'm going to give you a checklist of what you should have done by the end of week one. Are you ready? Great. So one of the first things you want to focus on is of course your strategy. Now don't be too intimidated by the word strategy because I think it makes it sound like this elusive thing that's really hard to create. No, we're going to start off with a simple strategy and in order for you to create it, you just need to answer a couple of questions. The first question is, who is your content for? Think about the intended audience of the content that you are going to create. This is incredibly important because if you start creating YouTube content without thinking about who it's for, it's not going to land with anyone. No one's going to look at it and think this is for me because actually you don't even know who it's for, right? <laughs> Who's it for? How old are they? What life stage are they in? What do they care about? What are their interests? What's their vibe, right? Think about who that person is, write as much as you possibly can in response to that question. It's worth noting that because you're just starting your YouTube channel fresh, all you need is a clear idea of your audience. You don't need a niche yet. Now, if you want to get further down the line when you're like, actually, I do want a niche. And if you don't know what a niche is, it's basically like a category or a topic that you create content about, right? If you get further down the line and you're like, I I do want a niche. The beautiful thing about this method that I'm teaching you right now is that further down the line, you can have a look at your analytics and you can see which videos are performing best for you. That information will tell you which niche to focus on, right? So instead of focusing on a niche really early doors, what I'd rather you do is think about who your audience are and just create content for that group of people. You can talk about different things if you want, and that's totally okay. As long as you're always speaking to your specific audience. The next thing I want you to think about as part of your strategy is your content format. Now the format of your content is essentially if you are going to do a lot of vlogs, so you're just taking someone around with you for the day or for the week, or if you want to do like sitting down talking head videos, like the video that you're watching right now. Now these are the two most common formats of YouTube videos. And therefore these are the ones that I want you to focus on because obviously we're just starting out and there's no need for us to complicate things just yet. Right now, what I recommend is that you have a mixture of vlog content and talking head chatty speaking to the camera style videos. This is important because a lot of creators start their YouTube channel intending to only share vlogs. When new creators do this, they sometimes struggle to grow. And the reason why is because it's really difficult to create a vlog that is compelling to someone who doesn't know you yet just like flat out, it's really hard, especially when you're only just getting started with video creation, right? On the other hand, creating a sit down casual style video where you're speaking about one specific topic or one specific aspect of your life is a lot easier for you to create. And it's also a lot easier to convince someone to go ahead and watch that. A perfect example of this is a vlog where you're saying, come spend the day with me versus a sit down talking head video, which is called story time, how I met my boyfriend. Someone who doesn't know you might click on the story time video because that sounds interesting. However, that same person who doesn't know you probably won't click on your day in the life video because they don't know you yet and therefore they're just not interested in your day in your life. I know that sounds blunt. I don't know what to tell you. There's no other way of saying it. It's just the plain old truth. So in conclusion, we want a mixture of vlog style content and sit down, chatty, chatty, talking head content. The third thing I want you to do in regards to your strategy is I want you to immerse yourself in your fellow YouTubers content. A lot of the time when I work with creators and they tell me they want to start YouTube and I'll be like, okay, cool. Who are your favorite YouTubers? And they'll be like, hmm. <laughs> desperately trying to think of that one YouTuber who they watch like once every few months. It's totally fine to start a YouTube channel and not be someone who has watched YouTube for years. However, if you intend to be active on a platform, it's important you immerse yourself on that platform. You'll be surprised in how much you learn when you watch YouTubers content. So go ahead and watch a bunch of YouTube content. I feel like that's a pretty great piece of homework to do, but it's going to help you in the long run as well. Okay. So the second focus area for week one is going to be your equipment because I want you to start filming your videos in week two which means you need to make sure you've got all the equipment that you need in week one. Now, the first thing I want to say is that you don't need anything fancy to start your YouTube channel. This video that you're currently looking at on the screen, this was my first ever video that I uploaded three years ago. I filmed this video on my old phone. I didn't even use the back camera, which by the way, if you're going to film using your phone, always use the rear cameras because these are far higher quality than the front cameras, right? I didn't even do that though at the time. I used the front camera. I didn't have a microphone and I wasn't even looking directly into the camera lens. 
lens. And yet here I am three years later and I'm a full-time YouTuber. Of course, I updated my equipment over time. I now look at the lens and I'm filming using a fancier camera. However, I did manage to grow without these things in the beginning, right? And you can do the exact same thing. So I'm gonna run through a few things that you're going to need. You will need some form of camera. However, this does include your camera phone. As I mentioned, if you use your phone, make sure you use the rear cameras, right? Please do not buy a fancy camera purely to launch your YouTube channel. I would rather you wait, get monetized and reinvest that money in a camera. So you're gonna need some form of device which can film a video. You're then going to need editing software. Again, I don't want you to purchase any editing software. Instead, I want you to use free software or software that you already have. If you have an Apple device, like a MacBook or even your phone, you will have iMovie and that's a really great beginner friendly editing software. You can also download free software such as DaVinci Resolve. That's what I used in my early days. DaVinci Resolve has a free option and it includes more than enough for you to get started with editing your videos. You then may potentially want some audio equipment. Now, this is especially important if you are going to have some form of vlogging element to your videos because filming yourself outside without some form of microphone is going to get a bit tricky, right? Because it's windy, especially if you live in England, like you'll never hear you. However, if you're only going to film yourself indoors, you can actually get away without having a mic for a little while. But I do want it to be one of the first things that you purchase once you're in the position to do so. So in terms of cost efficient microphones that you can use, you want to be looking for a wireless Bluetooth mic that you can just clip onto you because then you can use it when you're out and about and you're vlogging. And you can get these from Amazon. They're fairly inexpensive. Start off with something cheap that gets the job done. And as I said, you can upgrade and get something fancier further down the line. The next consideration is of course, lighting. Now, when you're out and about, it's just up to you to figure out where the light is, right? So that's about you doing some test shots, checking where, which direction the sun is and just making sure that you are being well lit. If you are filming indoors, natural lighting will work as long as you've got somewhere in your home that has a good sufficient natural lighting. If you do not have somewhere with good sufficient natural lighting, you might want to invest in a ring light. There are better lighting options you can get. Like I'm currently using a soft box. However, when I started out, I used a ring light and I used it for like over a year, maybe even two years. And it was perfectly fine. And they're fairly inexpensive, right? So that's what you want to focus on if you don't have a sufficient natural light wherever you're filming. Final thing I want to mention here, if you are going to film yourself at home, please do not tell yourself that you need to get a studio or go film somewhere else because your home isn't aesthetic. I hear this all the time. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm very proud of my background. I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, I didn't like where I was filming when I started out. No, I've always liked this background and I'm very fortunate about that. However, if you're in a position where you don't necessarily like the backdrop of where you're filming, all you need to do is find somewhere what has a plain backdrop, okay? You don't have to have photos on the wall or a light and a plant. You don't need all of that. You just need something what's plain because the focus of the video will be you. All right, so we're at the end of week one. It's an important week. I'm gonna run down what I need you to have done by the end of the week and then we'll move on to week two. So I want you to have your starter strategy. In order for you to have that, you just need to have had written down answers to those questions that I ran you through. If you want more help with this and you actually wanna create your full strategy, I do have a collection of masterclasses and resources called my YouTube Creator Vault that is currently available on my website. I'll link to it below because it will give you a workbook and a lot more information that you might want, right? The next thing I want you to have done by the end of week one is to have five YouTubers whose content you like. Ideally, you wanna to subscribe to them, maybe save their videos so that you've got them and they're easy to refer back to, but find five YouTubers who create similar content to the content that you want to create and save their videos. And when you watch them, just ask yourself, what is it about their content that you like? This kind of critical analysis is going to serve you well when you are creating your videos and you're reviewing them, right? You want to slowly start to practice the process of reviewing content. The third and final thing that I want you to have done by the end of week one is I want you to have filmed a test video. Now this test video is just to make sure that you're happy with your setup and the equipment that we spoke about. It doesn't need to be long, a minute will do. If you're going to do vlogs and sit down to talking head videos, then you're going to want to test both, right? So you want to get out and about and do a test video and you want to be at home and do a test video as well. And I just want you to upload it onto your laptop and just look at it and be like, okay, what's the lighting like? What's the sound like? what's the camera like? And just make sure you're happy with it before you go ahead and start filming a lot more videos. All right, my loves, should we move on to week two? Let's do it. Okay, we are on to week two. Congratulations, we've only got a few weeks left. Time is absolutely flying by. So in week two, there are two things that I want you to focus on. The first thing is going to be setting up your YouTube channel. Now, I don't want you to spend too long on this because this is one of those tasks that if we let ourselves get carried away, then we will, you know? We don't need to spend long on this. What we essentially want to do is get the bare basics set up. Now, the basic elements of your YouTube channel that you need set up is your profile photo and your banner. That is essentially what you need done. There are other elements that you can customize on your YouTube channel further down the line. But remember, we're trying to get 
your channel launched within four weeks in the most effective and efficient way. So we're just gonna focus on picking your profile photo and creating your banner. Now with your profile photo, you wanna choose a photo that is most relevant to your channel, right? And the type of content you're gonna create. If you are creating content about you or if you heavily feature in your content, which I do recommend, then you probably wanna use a photo of yourself, right? And ideally this photo of yourself, you've got no one else in it unless they are going to feature prominently on the channel. And also you don't wanna have a photo where there's too much going on, right? A classic rule to follow when it comes to your profile photo is there needs to be one subject and that subject needs to be clear. So if you're the subject, then you need to be clear in your photo. You don't wanna have all these other things going on around you, right? When it comes to your banner, it's going to be a similar vibe. You want the graphic that you pick or the photo that you pick, whatever it is, it needs to mirror the vibe of your content again. So if you're gonna pick a photo, then pick a photo that mirrors the type of content you're gonna create. If you're gonna create a graphic banner, then create one that again, mirrors the type of content you're gonna create. You can go ahead and look at my YouTube banner if you would like and just have a look to see what the vibe is for that one. But also, you remember I told you to find your five favorite YouTubers that create content similar to the content you wanna create? Go and look at their banners and see which ones you like. Once you've got a good idea of what you wanna have as part of your banner, I want you to go ahead and watch this video and fast forward to six minutes and 30 seconds. This is a section of a previous video of mine where I break down exactly how you can create your YouTube banner and size it correctly. Because YouTube banners, if you've not created one before, they're actually really tricky because you upload one photo, but it will crop it differently depending on if someone's looking at it on their laptop versus the TV versus the mobile app. So you have to create a banner that works across all these different devices and that can be tricky. But as I said, I give you literally a screen recording step-by-step -step overview of how to do that in that video. So I recommend watching that section when you're done with this video. The next thing I want you to do in week two, super exciting, because I want you to start filming some content. Specifically, I want you to film your launch video. Now, I want you to set out with the intention to just film this one video this week, right? Don't set out to film eight videos or whatever. It's not gonna work yet. Let's just film the one. This is your first ever video that you're filming. And I want this video to be a casual, get to know me style video. Now, the video that I showed you earlier, I'll put it back on the screen, my first ever video that I uploaded was exactly that. It was essentially a video where I spoke about all the side hustles that I had at the time, my full-time job. I know I don't have any side hustles and now I do this full-time, so things have changed. But that's what the video was about. And it was really casual. And because I was talking about a personal experience, it was a lot easier for me to film, which is why I want your first video that you film to be a similar style. Ideally like a story time or a get to know me style video. Think about whatever the focus of your channel is gonna be. Think about your audience and think about a topic that you think your audience would be interested in, right? I want you to then prep your video, write down a few talking points and then sit down with the setup that we've already tested in week one and film your first video. As I said, because it's gonna be a casual style video, hopefully it will be an easy video for you to get started with. In addition to that, because of this style of video that you're filming, you can actually set that video as your channel trailer. And you can do this by heading to YouTube Studio, going to the customization tab and uploading your channel trailer there. And what this means is that when someone lands on your channel, this is the first video that will automatically start to play. And it'll be a good video for this because it's gonna be a casual get to know me style video. Fun fact, that first video that I keep on referring to, that's my channel trailer. I know I should change it. <laughs> it's so old, but it is. And it worked really well for me for years. All right, so should we go to the checklist for week two? What I need you to have done by the end of this week is set up your channel. So you've got your banner, you've got your profile photo, great. And then I also need you to have filmed and uploaded, that's right guys, your casual get to know me style video. Yeah, so you've now got your channel up and running and you've got a video up and running. So things are moving. All right, let's take a quick break from our week by week plan because there is something that I need to discuss with you. I know you're just starting out on your YouTube journey. However, it's important for us to have an idea of how we're going to monetize our content further down the line in the earliest of days of our journey. For example, I created my first paid offer literally three or four months after uploading my first ever YouTube video. I was thinking about monetization from the early days and I really believe that that is a big reason why I was able to monetize my content so quickly. And I was able to quit my full-time job just six to seven months after uploading my very first YouTube video. So if you see this as a way for you to earn income, whether as a full-time creator or as like a part-time side hustle, then I want you to strongly consider Uscreen. Now Uscreen is an all-in-one membership platform which essentially allows you to turn your content into a profitable business and earn reoccurring income from your video content. Now if you're not familiar with 
the whole idea of video memberships, I'm about to blow your mind. Essentially, how a video membership using Uscreen would work is you would sign up to Uscreen services and that would grant you access to a whole load of different features. For example, you would be able to create your own membership site, which would house a selection of your video content. Your audience would then pay a monthly fee in order to get access to this exclusive bank of content. In addition to being able to host all of your videos behind this paywall, you can also do things like create a community using Uscreen's community hub. Now this community hub allows you to effortlessly blend your videos with different community features like member posts and chats and challenges, all of that good stuff. Now, something that I absolutely love and spoiler alert, something that I am currently trialing is the mobile application feature that comes with Uscreen. So essentially when you join Uscreen, you use their services, you are able to create your own branded mobile app. So basically you can create a membership in everyone's pocket. So people could take your video content around with them and engage with it when they're on the go, not just when they're at home on their laptop or on their computers, right? It essentially is giving you the ability to become part of your members' daily lives, which is insane. This mobile app that you'll be able to create using Uscreen will allow your members to join lives, to watch your video content, to take part in different community chats and different community initiatives. And you'll even be able to send push notifications directly to your members' mobile phones so they never miss out on the incredible things that you'll be doing as part of your community. One of my favorite Uscreen memberships is called the Filmmakers Academy. One look at their membership website, you'll get a clear idea of what you can actually create using Uscreen and just how high quality the end result is. Uscreen is a membership platform that is built specifically for video creators. So as I continue to run you through what you need to do in weeks three and four of your launch plan, I want you to keep Uscreen in mind for your monetization strategy. If you want to find out more about Uscreen, which I'm sure you do, head to uscreen.tv. I'll also put the link in my description. All right, let's move on to week three. I just had to check my fingers because I thought I was doing two. No, I'm doing three. <laughs> okay, we're in week three now. I know what you're thinking. What else is there to do, Jade? You've already got me to create a strategy, set up my YouTube channel, and I've already got a video live, like surely I'm done. Unfortunately, no, there's a few more things we've got to do, but we're almost there. We've only got two weeks left. So week three, I want you to focus on a couple things. The first thing is batching. Now, hopefully because you've already done your first video and it was a casual style video, you got a bit used to and familiar with speaking in front of the camera. So now we're in a position where you can actually sit down and film a couple of videos in one sitting. That's essentially what batching is. I want you to start by challenging yourself to film either two two or three videos, no more than three, because we're just getting started with filming ourselves and you know, we get fatigued and filming more than three in one go is difficult. Like I, I don't even film more than three in one go and I've been doing this for years. Now, in order for us to do this effectively, I want you to focus on your sit down talking head chatty videos. I don't want you to go ahead and do free vlogs in one day. Like we, we that's, it doesn't work, that doesn't work. <laughs> so what I want you to do instead is focus on filming three sit down casual talking head videos in one go. Now, in in addition to the fact that batching vlogs is almost impossible, another reason why I want you to focus on these styles of videos is because it gets you in the habit of batching talking head videos in the future. These are always great videos to batch, especially when you're talking about something which is what we call evergreen, which is basically a subject or a topic that isn't seasonal. So if I'm gonna sit here and talk about Christmas, then it's not evergreen because it's only gonna be relevant in a certain time of the year. But if I sit here and talk about my favorite books, then it is evergreen because it will be relevant all year round and these books will continue to be some of my favorites for years to come. So if you get in the habit of batching these types of videos when you're talking about something that is an evergreen topic, it means that you can always have them in your arsenal. Is that what people call them? like in your back pocket. I use one of those phrases that I don't usually use out loud and now I'm second guessing myself. You're gonna have these in your back pocket so that if a time comes where you're running out of content or you've gone on holiday and you need to post something, you can share those videos, right? So that's why we wanna do that. What I also want you to do when you're batching these videos is focus on the key points of the videos that you're filming. And I want you to sit down, get your phone out if you're not filming on that already. And I want you to film a short version of it. So let's say you are doing a story time video about how you broke up with your ex-boyfriend. If there was one specific part of that video where you you talk about how you felt after the breakup. I want you to focus on that one part, get your phone out, and I want you to use what you said in your longer form video to film a 60 second short. Okay. If you're not familiar with shorts, they're basically like reels or TikToks, but on YouTube, they're really great for allowing you to reach a broader audience, especially when you're just starting out. So it's important that as we start to get comfortable filming these longer videos, we also start to challenge ourselves to film shorter versions too. Okay. So I want you to film a couple of short videos during this filming session as well. All right. The other thing that I want you to focus on in week three is your thumbnails, because you might've noticed that I've not mentioned those yet. Your thumbnails are essentially adverts for your videos. That's the best way to think of it. If people don't click on your thumbnails, then 
then people won't watch your videos and YouTube will not recommend your content. So thumbnails are very important. Now I did mention previously that I have my YouTube Creator Vault, which is a collection of resources and masterclasses that you can actually purchase on my website. I have a whole masterclass on thumbnails where I do a full tutorial where you can actually watch me create a thumbnail. So if you're really stuck with thumbnails, I do recommend looking into that resource. However, to get you started, there's a few core things that you wanna keep in mind. The first thing is what I've already mentioned, see your thumbnails as adverts for your videos. So think about what you can write on your thumbnail or what photos you can use on your thumbnail, which are going to entice your audience to want to click on your video. The second thing, and this one's going to annoy you, is when you're starting out, I want you to spend as much time designing your thumbnails as you do creating the video. I know that sounds ludicrous, but someone told that to me once. I can't remember who. I heard that somewhere. If, if it was you who I heard it from, I'm so sorry I've not credited you. Please let me know in the comments. But I heard someone say that once and I took it on board. And when I was starting out on my journey, I spent just as much time on my thumbnails or at least almost as much time on my thumbnails as I did on my videos. And that really forced me to really think about what I was putting on my thumbnails, to really trial new things, to really learn new skills when it came to designing them. So that's why I'm going to pass that advice on to you. In case you're wondering, I use Canva to design my thumbnails. A lot of creators do. I'll put a link below in case you've not signed up to Canva yet. I do use the pro version because that's what allows me to do things like remove the background from my photos from my Canva. So I do recommend the pro version. All right. So this is your week three checklist. By the end of this week, you should have gotten familiar with creating thumbnails and hopefully you would have created a thumbnail for your launch video and added it in. I also would like you to have filmed a couple of different videos as well, uploaded them and scheduled them so they're ready to go too. Okay, guys, we're on week four. We're almost done. I'm so proud of you for making it this far. This is what we're going to focus on in week four. We're going to focus on SEO and that's basically it, right? So it's, it's not a terrible week, but there is still a fair amount for us to do. In case you don't know what SEO is, SEO stands for search engine optimization. Yes, it does sound complicated. You are correct. And yes, it can be complicated, but luckily not for us. In the way that we're going to be using it in week four, we're not going to be using it in a super complex way that really fancy marketing professionals do. We're going to be using it in a really simple but effective way. Essentially what SEO is referring to is search. So you know when you go onto YouTube and you search something into the search bar and then you get videos suggested to you? That's basically search. And the reason why those videos are popping up is because they're optimized for search. Hence the term search engine optimization. So what we want to do is follow a few different steps to increase the chances of our videos appearing when people are searching for YouTube content. So if you head onto YouTube now and you type in Instagram tips, YouTube tips, content creation tips, I'm going to pray to the YouTube gods that my video appears somewhere on that page. It might not be first, it might not be second, it might be eighth, I don't know, but it should appear somewhere. And the reason why my video is going to hopefully appear is because I'm using the tips that I'm about to break down to you. So the first thing I recommend you do is download either TubeBuddy or VidIQ. Now, these are tools which basically allow you to find find keywords for you to use in your videos. Now, keywords are essentially words or phrases that describe what your content is about. And it's these keywords that YouTube will use to try and figure out what your video is about. When YouTube can figure out what your video is about, it increases the chances of YouTube deciding that your video is going to pop up next time someone types in like Instagram tips into the search bar, right? Now, the reason why I've given you two options there is because I've previously been a tube buddy girl. Like it has been the platform that I usually use for search and I still use it for search. However, I am trialing vidIQ. I've heard great things about vidIQ. They've got a lot of new features that I'm currently trialing and I am loving. So I'm going to be honest and open with you right now. Yes, I've used TrueBuddy in the past and it has worked for me. However, vidIQ is looking pretty tempting right now. So why don't you have a look at both and pick for yourself? <laughs> now, what you're going to do is you're going to use either TrueBuddy or vidIQ to look up different keywords for you to use in your video content. Once you find some keywords that are super relevant to your videos and which TrueBuddy or vidIQ think are competitive or think are effective, you basically just want to include them everywhere you can. So put one of those keywords in your video title, put them in your description, name your video file with that keyword, say the keyword in your video. You want to use the keyword in as many different elements and different places as you possibly can when it comes to you filming, but also uploading the video onto YouTube. Because the more you use these keywords, the more likely YouTube are to pick up on your hints and to realize what your video is about. That's basically all you need to do to get started with search. So I'm going to move on to the final checklist for week four. So there's two things I want you to have done by the end of this week. I want you to have downloaded either TrueBuddy or vidIQ and started getting familiar with search engine optimization, which basically means I want you to have found some good keywords for your previous videos and your future videos and start implementing them all over your content. The second thing 
I would like you to have done is filmed a different style of video. I know last week I had you film some talking head, chatty chatty videos, casual style. Maybe this week you challenge yourself to go ahead and film your first vlog. The important thing to remember is that you're not gonna get good at something if you don't do it first. You're not gonna magically be incredible at content creation without actually creating content. You need practice. So the sooner you start filming these different formats of content, the better, yeah? Okay, my God, I feel tired after that. We got through a lot of stuff. And if you followed all of my steps in weeks one through to four, you'll now have a well-branded YouTube channel, which has a channel trailer, has multiple different videos on there, all different styles of videos and all designed for one specific audience. You would have also had some good thumbnails on there and you would have optimized your videos for search. And you would have done all of that in four weeks proud of you. All right, if you feel like hanging around, I recommend watching this video. It's actually part of a series that I create, which is all about viral trends on YouTube. These trends are really important for you to get familiar with if you want to really grow on YouTube and if you want to be in with a chance of growing pretty quickly. Thank you so much for watching as always. Don't forget you can check out Uscreen by heading to uscreen.tv or clicking the link in my description. Thank you so much for watching guys and I can't wait to see you in my next video.